Hello everyone, my name is Narin and in this session, let's learn about transactions and logs to support the transaction. The moment your brain hears the word transaction, obviously you will be start thinking about database transaction. It's kind of fine, but transaction is not just limited to database, but it's a very generic concept. And in this session, I'm gonna explain the different kind of logs which we use to support the feature transaction both in case of database and in case of non-database kind of uh, implementations as well. I'm pretty sure that you guys know about transactions and how it exactly works. These examples in this particular video is to make the concept stronger and understand what are the different type of locks available to support the transactions. Let's take an example in which, in this scenario, there are two friends who is trying to purchase something on Amazon from the existing wallet. Consider the Amazon wallet has about $100 and both have the login information and person A and person B are both trying to purchase something of worth $10. Now consider a hypothetical scenario in which both A and B are requesting or uh, you know, doing the payment at the same microsecond or nanosecond what happens in that case is both request goes parallelly into amazon server at the same time think like that and then the amazon will obviously have a you know connection code or makes a connection and what if those two connections also reaches to the database at the same time and the request to deduct the money from the amazon's wallet also happens at the same exact time what is expected to happen? So do you think that both requests, when the both request goes to the database and they both subtract $10, the result will be just $90? Or is it $80? Or some error? Or is it like locked? What, what will happen? Ideally, what should happen is definitely if two persons spends $10 and $10 from the same account, definitely in the database, the balance should be $80. It's not supposed to be $90. If the balance is $90, that means that there is some serious bug in the system. If it is $80, then everything is working fine. And if it is an error, then it's not reliable. And if it is locked, then also it's not reliable. And Hypothetically, these two will never happen and this will also not happen and always this is what happens in Amazon if you do purchase something in Amazon, okay? Because that is what is expected to happen, right? Even though both persons are doing the transaction at the same time, the amount uh, or the money should be deducted in the proper way, okay? So now how this feature is supported? Maybe you guys know the answer. But let me explain it to you guys. This is all happening because of the transactions. And even though both request to modify the same record goes to the DB, this is all happening because of the transaction. And how transactions work is, say, when the A request to, you know, deduct $10 from the existing balance of $100, that, that particular row will be locked that particular row will be locked and hundred dollar out of hundred dollar minus ten dollar will happen and the resulting will be ninety dollar will be updated in the same row until a finishes the you know deduction adaptation of the you know database entry or the balance in the database b is not b will not be allowed to modify or touch or read the data from the database. So even though both requests land at the DB at the same time, either of one will be picked first and then whoever gains, uh, whoever gains the lock, basically they are the one whose uh, you know, balance will be directed first. And then the second guy or the B will get hold of this lock and he will subtract it. Basically once this A finishes his job, B will also lock the same row or the record and then he updates it to $80. So the answer is $80.
So that means without transaction, a lot of things cannot be implemented and it's not easy. So what is a transaction? Transaction is a unit of work that you want to treat it as whole and it should either happen in full or nothing should happen at all. To give a better perspective about it, I'll take one more example in which the scenario is transferring money. There is a person A and, and person B's account in which person A has about $10 and person B has $0 in his account. Now, how to use transaction to do this work properly? So to do that, there are three essential steps to do that. First one is you need to withdraw. So whoever is going to perform this operation should first withdraw you know, specified amount from the source account that is A and then he need to deposit to account B. And meanwhile, if he wants to take some commission, he need to take that commission as well. So now this, this order is pretty much uh, you know, standard, like you need to first withdraw and then you need to deposit and then direct the commission or the directing commission can go in between uh, you know, withdraw and deposit. Let's keep this order. And there are three different operations happening. And how we make sure that all of these three performs as a single as a single unit. The problem here is consider we are not using transaction. We are just executing these three different you know um, operations in a simple function in a thread. Okay. Consider you know user A has requested. Okay, please transfer five dollar from account my account to B's account. In this case, if we are not using transaction. What happens? Now let's consider we want to transfer $5 from A to B. Now what happens? What are the you know, steps we perform is first we have to withdraw $5 from account A and then transfer that $5 to account B. Okay. And then you direct the commission. Maybe now consider we have $1 commission. And then you definitely need to update, you know, the source uh, account A. So totally we have, you know, in our source account A, that is about $4 because $5 we transfer and $1 the commission. So in A, we have $4. In B, we have $5. Okay. So this is all good. Hypothetically, this will work if there are no parallel transactions are happening. Okay. And if all of these operations worked uh, one by one perfectly. So what we saw was an ideal case. Now let's discuss some different use cases. Say for example, what happens when there is an error among one of the instructions in these three instructions or there's a server failure. Say for example, now what happens is, now AA has told the bank to transfer, for example, $5 as earlier, $5 to B. So now what happens, Consider that we are going to get error in some of the instructions. We don't know where. Say, for example, we withdraw. So, so let's execute. Let's execute the instructions. So we need to direct the five dollar from A. So when we withdraw, we are going to withdraw five dollar from account A. So the balance is another five dollar. So now, now we are trying to transfer this five dollar to to bank account B. So now consider uh, this function through some error. In that case, what happens if in if the code is not properly handled and this $5 is not deposited back to A, this $5 is kind of gone. This in the in the account A, we only have $5 and the $5 was not successfully transferred to B and that $5 is kind of gone. So this is what happens. But if you use the transaction, so consider now we are telling uh, the database that all of these three instructions are covered into a transaction. So what transaction says is transaction is a unit of work and it treats all of these instructions as a whole. And if everything goes well, then it is all. Otherwise, it's nothing. So everything should happen. Uh, every, everything should execute perfectly. Then only the whole thing will be you know, succeeded. Otherwise, everything will be scrapped, okay? Now, what happens is the same scenario. First, $5 will be directed from account A, so the balance is $5. And in the deposits, say we got some error. In this case, what transaction will uh, do is it is going to revert everything 
okay? And then the $5 will be added back to account A. So we still have the $10 in account A and we never transferred $5 to B. So that way we are safe. So transaction helped here. If, for example, everything worked fine, then our $5 will be deducted and $5 will be deposited to account B and then commission will be deducted again from the account A. And then the database knows that all of these operations were performed successfully. So it commits into the database. So all of the numbers will be reflected properly. If some errors, then it is going to revert. If everything succeeds, it is basically committing into the database. So everything is good. And now let's talk about one more scenario that is concurrency. So what happens when there are concurrent operation on the same account happening at the same point of time? Remember from the earlier example, I showed you that when a person A and person B are trying to do Amazon shopping at the same time, trying to buy two things from the same uh, wallet, uh, still in that case also everything, all of the amount should be perfectly directed like $20 was supposed to direct and it, it happened. Now, how do we make sure that is going to happen? And what happens if we don't use transaction? Consider now these operations, operations are not protected using transaction. Now, what could go wrong? Say, for example, two uh, times A has told to transfer some amount B. So A has told to transfer $5, okay, to B. And also, meanwhile, at the same time, A has also told to transfer $5 to C. So now what happens? So consider both the requests came to the database server at the same time, exact microsecond or nanosecond. Now what happens is the withdraw function will be executed. In that case, obviously, uh, inside the, this particular function, we'll be having a select statement. Basically, it checks what is the balance in account A. Obviously, the both operations sees that A has $10, A has $10, right? So in this case, what happens is both the thread think that A has $10 and $10, they direct $5 and deposit it to B. And this thread also does the same thing. They direct $5 and then deposit it to B and direct $1 commission, $1 commission, and they both will update the remaining balance as $4, and $4. So finally, what A account will have is kind of $4. But ideally, what was supposed to happen? Ideally, total of about you know $6 here and $6 here, $12 was supposed to be directed from account A, and total of you know $5 to account B and $5 to account C was supposed to be deposited. But now what happened was both you know transactions succeeded by transferring five dollar and five dollar and one dollar commission and one dollar commission was directed and still a has four dollar but it is so wrong right so this is like a totally buggy application now what ideally was supposed to happen now one of the instruction supposed to be was supposed to be executed and then only the other instruction was supposed to be executed but it didn't happen why? Because we are not kind of uh, protecting all of these operation, or we are not treating all of these operation as a whole, and they are not protected by transactions or any kind of locks. And the problem here was that these transactions were not properly isolated, and they're not, you know, uh, atomic, and that was the problem. So what happens now if we protect this these three operation with a transaction? Now what happens is. As soon as both requests came at the same time, still only one, either of these two threads, um, only one thread will actually get to access this particular uh, you know, bank account A or the A's account. So for example, if A, uh, if this thread, thread one and thread two, First, thread one will acquire the lock and then it does all these operations and then it releases the lock. So now thread two will acquire the lock and then it does the operation. Now, how different the operation works now? Now, even though both the threads request came at the same time to the database, first the thread one will acquire the lock. Now the calculation looks like something like this. So first it will check, it will basically withdraw $5 from $10. The remaining is $5 and then it deposits to B that is, it is sent to B, and then it is going to deduct commission, that is one more dollar, 
So now the remaining balance in the account A is $4. Now all done, right? So the transaction went successfully. Now the uh, thread will release the lock and then the other thread will basically, other thread or the connection, it could be thread or connection. So connection one and connection two or thread one or thread two, think it like that. So now thread two will acquire the lock. Now the transaction will start. Now it will try to withdraw. Now it will try to withdraw $5 and it was supposed to send it to or deposit to, to C. Now, since the account balance is only $4, now this transaction will fail in the first instruction itself because we can't deduct $5 from the existing account that because we only have $4 in the balance. This is how it was supposed to work. The transaction saved us from you now going bankrupt. So because of the transaction feature, we got two main advantages. The first one is we got a reliable unit of work wherein we had the correct recovery procedure uh, from any of the system failures or any errors. And also it gave a method of having the data consistency, right? So that's the that's a really important part because we always expect our data in the DB or anywhere to be always consistent. So transaction gives us the capability to keep the data consistent. Um, and also it gives us the ability to recover from any potential errors, which we see in our application. And also it gave us one more feature, which is the isolation from the concurrent access uh, that basically, uh, as I have already ex uh, explained, um, these days uh, we have a lot of distributed systems um, so that means that we have a lot of concurrent access of data it will be happening on from the DB or from any of the storage, right? So transaction basically provides us the you know isolation uh, from these concurrent accessors. So you just learned what are the different advantages of using transaction in your applications. It is very useful, right? But you also need to understand how exactly these transactions, uh, transaction feature is implemented inside the databases as well. Different databases implement the transaction feature in different ways, but the very generic or common way to inter, you know, implement the uh, transaction feature is called as write ahead log. So, so this is how it works. Say um, you have a single unit of work which internally contains a lot of queries. When you actually submit all of these queries or to execute to the database, those transaction related queries will basically end up into the what. So before modifying all of that data, a lock will be acquired uh, to the rows which will be affected by the transaction. Say in this case, if I'm just modifying one particular row, a lock will be uh, placed it basically ensures that nobody uh, other than this transaction will update this particular uh, you know, row. But there are different ways of unlocking as well. Say if your transaction isolation level is kind of set to allow it to read, but not to write, um, this is what happens. This lock will make sure that no one is going to update this record while this transaction is happening. But it, will, it might allow you to read the information which is already there before this transaction is updated. So once the transaction query is hit here, all the queries, uh, which also includes the redo, and do, and you know, all the commit related information will be recorded into the wall file. This is basically in-memory storage. And once all of this information is committed, um, basically, eventually all of the content which is there in the wall will be flushed back to the actual databases. So when the transaction is happening, what you should uh, remember is when the transaction is happening, this particular row is locked, but the data is not modified until all of this transaction related, you know, single unit of work has been executed properly. Once it is executed, all of this modifiable uh, data will be later pushed on to the database to persist for longer duration. So what you should look for here is there are two things. One is lock and the other one is wall. That is the right ahead lock. So this particular right ahead lock data structure or whatever you call it as this feature basically provides you to do, you know, commit and roll back that kind of features. But the lock here is the one which basically provides you uh, the, you know, consistent um, data modification. 
because once we lock this particular row, nobody is allowed to update this particular row. So hence, this particular lock is very important in transaction. This is just an example in database, but I'm going to show you a lot more examples where the locks are the one which plays a very crucial role in providing the consistent data or providing the transaction capabilities. So this is just in the database, but uh, let's learn what are the different kind of locks available uh, which actually helps us to do transaction-like features in our distributed systems.